Mumbai Pune Expressway is a route that so many of us take so often. But few realize how this route has been a trade expressway for more than 2000 years. The road cuts through the western ghats that connected the strip of coastal land where the old port of Sopara was to the hinterland. No wonder then that from ancient times this route was dotted by not just towns and settlements but also places of worship. Go up these stairs and you will find what is considered to be the oldest of the many Buddhist cave complexes in the area. These are the Bhaja Caves right behind me, the oldest cave structure over here in and around the area of the old Supara. It was a very significant area because across me I can see the Logar Fort, uh, below I can see uh, uh, fields which once would have been thick forests. This is where a lot of the Buddhist monks used to live and pray and meditate and it was very very close to the trade route that connected the Dakshinapa, that is the main road going into the Deccan to the very very famous port of Sopara. Dated to about the 2nd century BCE, the Bhaja Caves is a cluster of 21 caves that were occupied for hundreds of years. The most spectacular part of these caves is its unique Chetyagraha or prayer hall. This is the main Chetyagraha here at the Bhaja Caves. It's a pillared kind of a hall with the stupa right at the center out there. And on the roof, if you can see, it is spectacular because it has got wooden frames which are holding the pillars together. No restoration work has been done here as I understand it. And this wooden panel perhaps has been around for more than 2000 years, just indicating the kind of workmanship in that period. Outside the ornate Chetyagraha, this complex has simple rock-cut viharas or living quarters. Small and rudimentary, it just shows how tough life would have been for the monks who lived here, mostly during the monsoons. Isolated from the world below, monks lived with very little. In fact, at the end of the cave complex is another shrine that tells us a lot about this place. Here the rain is pelting down because there is a makeshift shed about Mina to protect these caves, especially during the monsoon, because this is actually on a cliff edge and it has been beautifully terraced. Uh, we are at the end of the Bhaja Caves, and this is one of the most spectacular places in these caves. It is the last cave literally, and over here you will find 14 stupas dedicated to the Sthanaviras or the resident leaders who lived over here. There are 14 of them, some of them even have the names of these Sthanaviras inscribed on them. The Bhaja Caves are interesting because they also show a stark Central Asian influence indicating links with far off lands. One great example of this is cave number 18. Scholars believe that this could be depictions of Surya, the sun god, and Indra, the god of rain and thunder, with clear Central Asian features. Back in Mumbai at the Sumaya Institute, I caught up with the head of the Institute's Buddha Center. Supriya Rai has been taking friends and students to the Bhaja Caves for years and has studied the evolution of Buddhism in the region. So based on all the research that has been done by archaeologists and historians, how would Bhaja have been 2000 years ago? Actually a lot of that would be in the realm of imagination because we don't have enough of recorded documentation to say that at this place so many people lived or this happened or that happened. Uh, but we know from uh, certain references to these locations in textual sources that these were also centers of learning. Yeah? Now if there is a center of learning it means there are resident masters. Yeah, there would have been resident masters and at Bhaja we know that there would have been great monks or really revered monks from the stupa gallery because when you are burying relics, yeah, please remember in the tradition starts with the burial of Buddha's relics. Then if you're burying relics in a, a monastic institution, obviously these are venerated monks. You don't extend that to everyone who comes along. So there would have been a community of very senior monks. But the thing to remember about the Buddhist tradition is the monks, a majority of the monks were also mobile. They went from place to place in search of knowledge. There were several who studied with a monk in this particular tradition, went and explored another tradition. There was a fluidity, there was a movement. The Bhaja Cave, Supriya adds, can't be seen in isolation. It has to be seen in the context of the many other cave complexes like Kanheri, Karle and Bhetse, 
within a 100 kilometer radius from it. In this area, there are at least uh, 50 or so uh, clusters, I would say, and the total number of excavations go in excess of a thousand. Yeah, some of them are not in the best uh, state; they have, uh, you know, uh, deteriorated over time. Some are extremely uh, well preserved. This region is important to us for one uh, reason that we have a continuity from the early period which is you know the early couple of centuries bc going all the way down almost to the 13th uh, century you have continuous presence in the form of these uh, excavations it means it was a thriving buddhist area the ports that are close to this region would have provided the material support in the form of these merchants who patronized and the geography lends itself to uh, this kind of uh, structure. Buddhist cave complexes like Bhaja were far more than just monasteries. They were centers of learning where teachers taught and different strains of the faith evolved. And as you look out from the Bhaja cave, it is hard not to be connected with the land and get transported to a time 2000 years ago.